Okay, so far we've been dealing with static templates. Now to make our templates more dynamic, we're going to have to be able to pass in data. Now to do that, we're going to use the method execute te template. Now this is still going to take a writer, it's going to take the name of our template, but it's also going to go ahead and take a piece of data. Now this one we're just passing in the variable name, which holds the value John. Now looking at our function signature for our method here, notice that the data we're passing in is an empty interface. So that means we can pass in a string, pass in a slice, can pass in a struct, an int, whatever we want to pass in. But the one thing to take note of is this is still just one element. So for instance, I couldn't pass in two strings. So if I wanted to pass, if for instance, if I did want to pass in two strings, I'd have to use a composite data type. So I'd have to you know, pass it in as a slice of string, for instance. Or if I had a whole bunch of ints and strings and all kinds of different pieces of data, more than likely I'd have to use some kind of struct. So our template is, there it is, is going to have two curly braces, a dot, and then two more closing curly braces. Now that's going to get consumed and replaced with the root of our data source. Now our data source is just the value John. So this is so this is all just going to get replaced with John and we can render it to the browser. Now before we fire that up, it if you want to make a comment in your template, just use the two different curly braces, uh, opening and closing, and then just just like you'd make a comment in Golang. But anyway, so this won't get rendered just like you know an HTML comment wouldn't get rendered. So let's go ahead and run this. There we go. Welcome, John. So the curly braces and the dots were replaced with the source of our data. Now, just dumping all of our data all at once isn't going to be terribly useful. So to access the different fields, we're just going to use the dot notation. So let's go ahead and go to our other example. And in this example, we have two different data types. We went ahead and made a product spec struct, and we went ahead and made a product struct. Now the product struct, a product ID, a name, a cost. Now the specs is field is just a product spec struct. So we have a struct within our struct. But anyway, we create our product one, and has an ID, a name, a cost, and spec is of course just the data type product spec. We have a size, we have a weight, and description. So we have fields and we have fields nested inside of fields. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and render this to the browser. And looking at our product info.html file, by doing it the same way we did before, it's just going to dump all that entire struct into that same spot. So let's go ahead and show what that does. There we go. So, so where we had those curly braces, it just drops our entire struct. Um, all information we want to display to the user, obviously not in the format we want to show it. So we're going to have to use the dot notation to display the different fields where we want the dis to display them. So let's go ahead and change that to our other template. Now in this template, as you can see, using dot notation, so we still have our curly braces. Now inside here we have dot name. So inside of our product, you know, wicked cool phone is the name. You know, we have our product ID, we have our cost. Now when we get down to specs, 
Remember that the specs field, we have our specs field and we have these other fields inside that. So to get to those, we're going to have to use dot specs to get to that field and to get into the fields inside there, we're going to have to give the individual ones uh, behind it. So we have specs.size should give us our size, specs.weight give us our weight, and specs.description should give us our description. So let's go ahead and run that. There we go. So as you can see, our, our name was, was rendered. We passed in our ID, our price, um, all the pieces of information that we had for, for our spec. So it, the key things to remember here is you can only pass in one piece of, of data. So you're going to have to utilize your composite data types. You're more than likely you're going to use a lot of different structs. So you can pass in lots of different things. So uh, if there's, well, I guess that pretty much sums it up. But anyway, if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to cover, uh, just post it down in the comments, and I'll hear from you on the next one.